Hello everyone and welcome to another project order series video. Today we're going to be solving problem 36 which is the double base palindrome. So we're given a number such as 585 and the binary representation for that base 10 number in binary base 2. So we have to check to see if the base 10 and the base 2 right, are both palindromic. It says that we need to find all of the palindromic base 10 and base 2 right less than 1 million. However, it says split node that the palindromic number in either base may not include leading zeros. So we've seen how to reverse a number before. But why is that unique to this problem? Well, we know that if we have a base 10 number such as 10 or 100, if we reverse that mathematically, well, we only end up with one, meaning that all of the trailing zeros get dropped. And that also enforces that we're not going to have any leading zeros as well. So that makes it very useful for this problem. However, how do we handle the base 2 part? Well, a base 2 number can actually be read as a base 10 number. Well, they do include 1 and 0. So this number could, let's say we have 2, right, in base 10. And we convert that to... Uh, binary, well, that's going to be 10. So we can actually apply a base 2 number as a base 10 number, meaning that we can just write one palindromic function for base 10 and then just apply that to base 2. And that makes the problem a lot cleaner and shorter. All right. So let's get started. So what we're going to do, well, like I said, I wanted to do a little bit of functional programming. And I'm literally reinventing the wheel here because there are classes that can actually do this for us. And we can just use that to pass our implementation there. But it's always good to start things from scratch so people can actually see how things are being created and not just giving them some magic box that makes things work. And actually, that's how functional programming does things. So we need to go ahead and create an interface. And I'll call it uh, palindrome. All right. And we need to create a method in here. So this is going to be uh, is palindrome. And this is going to go ahead and take in a big integer, and I'm going to call it n. So to make things easier for us, I'm going to create all the implementations inside of the main method. So let's define that. Next, we need to go ahead and create a palindrome in base 10. So just check for base 10 palindrome. And this is going to equal, we take in that lambda syntax for the input that we want to pass in. And then we just need to go ahead and define the body. All right, so like I said before, if we convert two, right, to base two, we're gonna get 10 because it's gonna be one zero. But why is that unique? Well, we know that if we reverse 10 or any even number for that case, it's never gonna be palindromic. So we need to go ahead and just check for that case. So we can see something like if, right, n, and then we do a mod, and then we do a big integer, a two, right? Uh, dot compared to um, big integer dot zero. If that is equal equal to zero, then we can just go ahead and return false. All right. So next, what we need to do is we need to keep a copy of n. So I'm going to call this one cp, it's going to equal to n. So that we, when we reverse um, cp, we can check against n to see if they're the same, because we need that to see if the number is actually a palindrome or not. Next, we're going to just create a variable for the remainder. I'm going to call it rm. And then we need to create a big integer for the result. I'm going to call this rest. It's going to be equal to big integer dot zero. All right, so we're going to say while, right, cp dot compared to uh, big integer dot zero, right, is not equal to zero, meaning that the number doesn't become zero. Then we need to say that rm equals, we're going to do uh, cp mod, uh, let's get everything but the mod. 
That's weird. All right, so we're gonna do CP, right? Mod. And then we want to mod uh, big integer, right? Dot 10. And that's it. And then what we need to do is calculate the uh, results. So we're gonna say res is gonna equal res, right? Dot multiply. And we're gonna multiply this by big integer dot 10, right? So do do big integer dot 10. And then we need to go ahead and add the remainder to that. So do, we're gonna do add RM. And then all we have to do is we need to reduce CP by a factor of 10. I'm gonna say CP equals uh, CP dot and then divide, right? And then we'll do a big integer dot 10. All right, so once we have that, all we need to do is just return, right? Res dot compare to, and then we need to do n, right? Um, equal equal to zero, and we're done with the base ten implementation. So let's go ahead and apply this right to the base two implementation. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and say uh, palindrome base two. Right, it's going to equal, and let's go ahead and take in the parameter. Then let's go ahead and implement the body for this. So how is this going to work? Well, like I said, because we can treat a binary number as a base 10 number, that means that the base 10 number we can use to check to convert um, the uh, to check to see if the base 2 number is binary or not. So what we need to do is first we need to go ahead and take in the binary representation of n. So we're gonna say binary is gonna equal to we're gonna do a integer dot two binary string. And then we need to say n dot int value. All right, so we get that uh, string representation. Then we just need to go ahead and create a big integer. So we can say big integer, integer equals new big integer. And then we're gonna go ahead and pass in binary here because you can actually take in a string for an argument. Then we need to go ahead and return, right? Uh, base 10 dot is palindrome and pass in integer. And that's it. We've just converted, uh, we just now been able to check if a base two number, right, binary number, is actually palindrome or not. All right, so what else is left? Well, we just have to go ahead and sum things up. So you can go ahead and say uh, big integer, right, um, sum is gonna equal uh, big integer zero, All right? So now that we have this, we just need to go ahead and create a for loop. So we're gonna say for uh, big integer i equals big integer dot one, all right, i dot compare to. Um, let me go ahead and shrink this for a bit, all right. I'm gonna do a big integer. And I wanna use probably use the, uh, let's use the value off here and let's go ahead and pass in 1 million. And I'm still gonna go ahead and kind of shrink this down a little bit more, all right? Um, if that is less than zero, Jesus, it's like just keeps going out. All right, we wanna do um, I, equals i dot add right uh, big integer dot one so just created a for loop here then we need to go ahead and say that if right um base 10 dot is palindrome and then pass in i and 
base 2 is palindrome i. Then we just want to sum things up. So we're going to say that sum equals sum dot add i. All right. And then we're, once we're done with this, all you have to do is print out sum. So we're going to say SLT and print out sum. All right. So once we run this, we should go ahead and get our result. So let's run this. And this should be the answer that you should get. All right, guys, this will be it for this tutorial. If you enjoy it, please give me a thumb up. If you have any questions, please put them down in the comment section below. And I'll see you guys in the next project or other series video. Peace.